waiter will be right here. He never smiled at me like that, Ramon. Is it only for the customers? Please, Mr. Henry doesn't like me to talk to you during business hours. Mr. Henry don't like you to talk to me any time. And Mr. Henry and me don't always have the same likes. Fifteen out of twenty. Why, sure. No kidding, Ramon. Why do you have to pull away from me like I was poison or something? The least you can do is look at me once in a while. Or... We're here to do a job and we're well paid for it. No, I, I think Mr. Henry's very generous. I think Mr. Henry's a fat slob. Wait. You forgot the box. Oh, yeah, that's right. Bad girl. Mustn't forget Mr. Henry's little tin box. Fifteen for the little tin box. Regular checks are made by the Internal Revenue Service on those who operate cash businesses, such as cabarets and nightclubs, to detect possible evasion of income taxes and insufficient payment of excise taxes, which were collected for the government at their source. And now, in my role as Chief of the Intelligence Division, Internal Revenue Service, I'm going to tell you about a case involving both excise and income taxes and three people who conspired to evade the payment of these taxes to the government. This is Treasury File 1896, Internal Revenue Service. The case of the little tin box. Another good crowd, eh, Ramon? All we could handle. This place has done very well these last four years. And everybody connected with it has done very well, right? I have no complaints, Mr. Henry. Nor I, yet. Any more strangers out there again tonight? Anybody watching the cash register? Nobody I could notice. Why do you always watch for strangers, Mr. Henry? Well, it always pays to know who your customers are, Ramon, in case they might be looking for little tin boxes. Anything else, sir? Oh, uh, just one more thing. We've been friends too long to start having arguments now. Let's keep it that way. Uh, I don't understand, sir. If it's um, Gloria you're thinking about, I, I only associate with her as my work requires. To me, she's, she's just the cashier. Okay. I'm not accusing you of anything. I just don't want you to forget. She's still my girl. Yes, sir. By a smile. You better behave yourself. You keep fooling around like this, you're gonna get us into trouble. For a guy like you, it might be worth it. Ah, getting some ice, senor. That's right. I have a nice table for you. Fine. And in the past two weeks, I've been a very frequent visitor to the Hat and Cane Club and to several other nightclubs of the same general type in that section of St. Louis. And according to my observations, the Hat and Cane Club is doing just as well as the others, if not a good deal better. And yet, according to the club's excise tax returns, it's been hardly making any money at all. I don't believe it, sir. I've checked their rent, their approximate food and entertainment costs, the number of people they employ, and if my calculations are anywhere near correct, they could be concealing uh, fifty or sixty thousand dollars a year in taxable income and excise taxes. Well, the salary that Henry claims to be paying himself certainly seems low. $150 a week for the owner-manager of an enterprise such as this Hat and Cane Club that you described is hardly appropriate. Sir, I think it's ridiculous. And yet their figures on excise taxes check with the ones recorded on the cash register. Their books have been audited at regular intervals by reputable firms. We haven't been able to find anything wrong with them. Yes, I know, Chief. But we also know the cash registers can lie if we want to make them lie. And I believe Mr. Gilbert Henry did. All right, Colton, if you feel that way about it, go after him. And if you need anything from me, just let me know. A preliminary investigation of Gilbert Henry's standard of living, 
the apartment he kept, the car he drove, the expensive tailor from whom he purchased his clothes, revealed an immediate discrepancy in the amount of money he appeared to be spending and the actual amount which he reported earning. To check the possibility of a past criminal record, Agent Colton contacted local, state, and federal police agencies, but no entry of a previous record for Henry appeared in the files. However, it was learned that the liquor and restaurant licenses which were obtained for the Hat and Cane Club were not obtained by Mr. Henry himself, since this would have required a sworn statement of no previous convictions, a statement which, if proven false, would have been grounds for perjury. Instead, curiously enough, the licenses were obtained in the name of Raymond Arosi, the club's head waiter. Good night, Joe. Good night. Listen, Ramon, when are you going to stop making believe? You never even noticed me. You know I'm not that bad to look at. Why do you keep putting on an act? Why don't you leave me alone? Trouble, that's all you are. Trouble for everybody. Maybe I can't help it. Maybe I can't keep it in anymore the way I feel about you. Well, how do you expect me to feel? Seeing you every day, week in, week out. Having you stand right there, never giving me a tumble. I think I'm made of. I know what he's made of, and you're his girl. Am I? You think I picked him for a partner? I'm sick and tired of being stuck up on a shelf with a tag on me saying, kill Henry's private property. That's your business, not mine. Nobody asked you to take this job, and nobody's asking you to stay. Look, give me a chance to talk. Oh, what are you so worried about? Gil's in Chicago. I don't care where he is. I'm busy. Say it. Tell me what a pest I am. You better go home, Gloria. What for? Why don't you take me home? Come on, I dare you. Go on, get out of here. What are you afraid of, me or yourself? Come on, take me home just once. Take me in your car and put your arms around me and show me I don't mean nothing to you. Come on, show me. How do you think it's been for me? I think I haven't wanted you all this time. Watching you out of the corner of my eye. Wishing I was him and going crazy every time he took you home at night. Why do you think I try to hate you? I don't know. But I don't care anymore. It's bad, Gloria. Bad for both of us. If he finds out about it, he'll kill us. Let's not talk about him. It's us two, working there all the time, seeing each other, knowing we can't be together. It'll be much worse now. We don't have to stay there forever. If we got enough dough, we could run away. Maybe out west or down to Mexico. If, if. When you run away from a man like Gil, you have to run far. Where would we get that kind of money? Same place he gets it. A little tin box. Don't be a fool. Why not? He'd never know the difference if we played it right. We could have a little tin box all our own. Because of Raymond Arosi's connection with the liquor and restaurant licenses for the Hatton Cane Club, a simultaneous investigation of his financial affairs was begun. Arosi, too, appeared to be living above his reported income and a systematic check was made of his personal expenses, both past and present. Colton learned from the manager of the apartment hotel where Arosi lived that his charges ran as high as $300 a month, that Arosi paid in cash, and usually in crisp new bills. On the possibility that he might be able to trace new money to the bank from which it came, Agent Colton asked to be notified the next time a transaction of this nature took place. The next time was only a few days later. Hello? Yes, Colton. I see. The manager showed you the bill, eh? Yes, sir. It was new money and the serial numbers were in sequence. Fortunately, I was able to trace it to a bank right here in town. 
Yeah? I described Rosie and Henry to the tellers, and one of them said his name was Henry Pratt, a depositor who always asked for new money. And Chief, Henry Pratt is the alias for a man with a criminal record. Henry Pratt, eh? I see. The Illinois police had that information? That's right, sir. Henry Pratt and Gilbert Henry are one and the same man. No, it's no great inconvenience. It's just that I don't understand why you've suddenly decided to audit my books. What's it all about? Oh, we frequently do this, Mr. Henry. In a way, it's as much for your protection as it is for ours. Oh. Now, let's see. You bank the club's receipts at the bank around the corner. Well, I don't always bank them myself. Sometimes my cashier does it. And you have no account for the club anywhere else? No. What about yourself? Do you have a personal account anywhere else? No, I bank there, too. It's convenient. I see. And now to get back to these canceled bar checks and dinner checks. Are they always put through the cash register when a customer pays his bill? That's right. See, the roll on the cash register keeps a complete record of every transaction. That's why I can't get gypped. But I notice these checks are not numbered. In most places, they number the checks consecutively, just to make sure the cashier doesn't withhold any money. Not my cashier. I've had her too long. Besides, the head waiter keeps tabs on her. And you are completely satisfied with the way they handle the operation? Completely, Mr. Colton. If I couldn't trust them, I couldn't trust anybody. He'll never find out about us until it's too late. I've held out almost $100 already. You're taking too much. Even if he doesn't go over every penny, you can tell the kind of crowds we've been having. The waiters can tell him. The waiters can't prove a thing. As long as these checks aren't numbered, he'll never know how much we take for him and how much we take for us. It works both ways. If it works at all. I don't sleep at night thinking about it. Good night. I wake up in a cold sweat, dreaming he's there, standing by my bed with a gun. I have to keep the lights on or I can't sleep at all. Honey, it won't be long. Two more weeks, maybe, maybe three. After that, it's all us. It's the way you want it, ain't it, Ramon? Is anything ever the way you really want it? Your job, your plans, even being in love. Isn't there always something wrong, something that spoils it for you? Sweetie, you can't lose your nerve. I never had any nerve. That's the trouble with me. Always afraid to fight, even for what I want. Always afraid. Not because I would be hurt. Because I'd be yelled at. Like my father used to yell. In my ear, I can still hear him. I can still see his angry face. I don't know, darling. I'm afraid I'm not much of a man. I love you, Ramon. I don't care what you are. Nick, tell Raymond I want to see him in my office right away. Yes, sir. Of course, it could be just one of those things. But when receipts start falling off, that hits me where I eat. And I eat plenty. Just remember, I pay for it, too, with nice brand new bills. Yes, sir. I've always said you pay very well. But you still don't know why business was off last night and the night before. No, sir. I, I hadn't noticed it was off. Ramon, you didn't know me in the old days when I was with the Kingman boys on the south side of Chicago, did you? No, sir. Well, there was a guy in that mob that figured me for a real sucker. He was a numbers runner for me. He got the idea that he could hold out some of the bets and bank them for himself. He got the idea he was pretty handsome, too. Take my girl to the movies once in a while. You don't get ideas like that, do you, Ramon? No, sir. Well, that's fine. It's funny I should think of that guy. I haven't thought of him in eight years. Not since the day I went to his funeral. yourself, Ramon. 
Yes, sir. Continuing his investigation of the Hat and Cane Club, Agent Colton learned from the printer who supplied the club with bar and dinner checks that the head waiter had specifically ordered the checks to be printed without serial numbers. Moreover, the printer's records showed deliveries of almost twice as many checks as the club's cash register recorded using. Since Raymond Orosi was the man directly responsible for presenting all checks to the cashier, both Orosi and his cashier were placed under surveillance. It looks like we found something on Orosi and the cashier, Chief. There's no question about their withholding checks and cash from the register. Hayes watched them for three nights running, and he counted at least 30 transactions that never were rung up. Well, we could take action against them for fraud and conspiracy to avoid the payment of the excise taxes. But if we do that, what happens to Mr. Henry? Hmm. Yeah, there's a chance he might wriggle off the hook if he blames it on Orosi and the cashier. It'll be hard to prove that he was in on it, unless they spill the whole story. Well, do you think they could be persuaded to talk? Well, we could try, Chief. It seems to me Orosi is the weakest link in this chain. If we could convince him there's no point in holding out information, he may come over to our side. All right, Colton. Try him. No, I, I didn't do it. I don't know anything about those checks or the cash register or anything. You have no right to come to my room and tell me that I did. Mr. Orosi, we came here to give you an opportunity to tell the truth. We have witnesses to testify that you and the cashier withheld checks from the cash register. And we also know that for some time you've been receiving payments from Mr. Henry, which you haven't reported to the government. Do you want to deny that? You're just saying this to trick me. We're trying to find out the truth. Now, whose racket was this? Yours and the cashier's, or were you working this for Mr. Henry? No, please, leave me alone. Mr. Orosi, you are going to be asked these questions under oath. And so is Mr. Henry. Are you going to perjure yourself to protect him? I don't know what I'm going to do. Give me until tomorrow. I'll talk to you then. All right, Mr. Orosi, we'll be back here at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Come on, Joe. Are you nuts or something? You can't tell those Treasury guys the truth. Look, we've got to get out of here tonight. What good would it do? Where can we go that they won't catch up with us? Oh, honey, you don't know what you're saying. You talk to those guys and we'll both go to jail. Three or four years, maybe. You want to wait three more years so we can be together? Didn't we wait long enough? It wouldn't be any good, even if we did run away. You can't run and live at the same time. Always we would be watching, listening, waiting for them to come for us. Always we'd be fighting. Her mind. No, I don't want to fight. Not with you, Gloria. I want to go back to where I was before I came here. I want to begin again with a clean slate, with clean people. There's no one like Gil to frighten me, to scare me into doing what I never wanted to do. Hey, wait a minute. What about me? What am I supposed to do? Let you send me off to jail? If you want, you can run away. With Gil. Is that what you planned for me? To have me spend the rest of my life with him? Sweetie, you can't do this to me. You've got to take me away, do you understand? You've got to. I mean it, Ramon. Otherwise, I'll tell Gil you're planning to squeal on him. I'll tell him right now. Gloria, he'll kill me. Are you going to do it, Ramon? But how are we going to get away? There isn't time. We haven't any money. I have some cash. I have the money we took out of the little tin box. It isn't enough. Well, then we'll, we'll get more. We'll, co we'll come back after the club's dark and take the receipts out of the safe. Oh, more trouble. Always we get in deeper and deeper. You've got to do it, Ramon. Otherwise, I tell Gil. But if you talk... Good evening, Mr. Henry. Everything all right, Ramon? Yes, sir. Everything's fine. Thank you, sir. 
I won't be here anymore tonight. When you close up, be sure you put the box in my safe and lock up my office. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Hurry up, it's almost three o'clock. I'm doing it as fast as I can. What was that? I don't hear anything. Keep going. Working tonight, eh, Ramon? Extra dough, I suppose. Can I pay you enough for the job you do? Are you and Gloria temporarily short of funds? Look, Mr. Henry. Shut up. Put it down. Yeah. <laughs> Going on a little trip, were you? I don't remember anybody telling me anything about it. Looks like I'll have to get a new head waiter and a new cashier. Gil, we're all in a jam. Shut up. You gotta listen, Gil. The Treasury guys are on to us. They went up to Ramon's place this afternoon and put the bee on him. They wanted him to squeal on you. Yeah? Honest, Mr. Henry. They know we've been holding out on those dinner checks, and, and they asked about the tin box and, and the money we haven't been turning in for the excise taxes. You were here for six hours tonight, and you didn't say a word about it. Don't tell me what's been going on. I know what it's like to handle money for the boss. For four years, you've been putting it away for me in this little tin box. Fifty, sixty thousand a year. And it was too much for you. You wanted some of it for yourselves. Honey, you gotta believe us. Those treasures. I like... told you to shut up. You and Ramon played us a little too smart. No, Gil. The, the, the treasury. The treasury, my eye. You're gonna pay for this little party. Gil, look out! What's the idea? How'd you guys get in here? We followed you, Mr. Henry. We like to keep our suspects under surveillance. And also, we like to protect our witnesses. Mr. Arosi, you should have known we wouldn't want you to leave town. I couldn't help it. I'll tell you anything you want to know. You keep your mouth shut. It's no use, Mr. Henry. We heard every word you said. You can't prove a thing. No. All we need is this little tin box. of four years, almost $195,000 was deposited in this little box for Mr. Gilbert Henry, who made no mention of it whatsoever in his tax returns. For willfully evading the payment of income taxes and for deliberately pocketing the excise taxes belonging to the government, Gilbert Henry was convicted on four counts and sent to a federal penitentiary for a term of five to eight years. Raymond Orosi and Gloria Loomis were also convicted for their part in this conspiracy to defraud the government, but received a lesser sentence. <laughs>